Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio Workshop video, and uh, today we're going to go over buffers. So, pretty much in a nutshell, um, this is what happens when you buffer. Oh, starting to hurt. Oh dear. So, um, yeah, so this is what you will experience if you try to buffer your stuff. Well, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, yeah. But it's good to always consider the worst case, right? So, um, yeah. We now have a new form of concrete. Which is fantastic. Nice and, uh, hot pink. So, <laughs> in all seriousness, though, we are going to go into buffers. Um, we, we did think, someone has suggested, I think, uh, we do this, it was a really good idea, so, um, but, but seriously, if you do buffer, I mean, you do need to be really careful of this, because, um, obviously this can happen sometimes by accident, and, and, and you, and, and then this, like, the lag isn't even the worst part, right? This is a huge pain in the ass to clean up. And it gets everywhere. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna, go ahead. Pretty much you have to blueprint your entire base. And just deconstruct the whole thing and rebuild it. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, anyway, we're going to get into it here. Um, we have a, like, a example of a, of a bad way to use a buffer, and Zuri is going to do quite a bit of the explaining here, because he has some really good points about, um, the reasons for usually not using a buffer. Alright, so... I see this actually quite commonly, and we, we stuck it on the end of the bad smelter design. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, interstitial buffering, it forces it through it, so that actually causes a bit of lag and power, extra power draw that you don't need to spend. Right. If the goal is to uh, have user chests, you don't even need buffer chests because you can go over to your smelter and just pick up a stack, since these fill up a whole stack, and that also accounts for another function that the buffers do, and that's the evening of, of uh, you know, supply surges. Mm -hmm. Since each and every single one of these has a stack in it, that's, uh, that's a bit of smoothing you can do inherently without the need of buffers. Right. But now into the meat of the situation. <laughs> Getting into the economics of Factorio, there's this often overlooked thing called opportunity cost. The time, the space, the energy, the mental power, whatever, that you spent building the buffer, you could have spent instead on expanding smelting, expanding mining, expanding your science production. Right, exactly. So it's kind of time and effort resources wasted on building the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, filling the thing is another layer of opportunity cost that people overlook. While this is operating and the buffer's filling, the, this copper here is not doing anything inside this box besides sitting in this box. If you had a bigger science set up, you would be turning this into tech. Or you could have been making green circuits for more uh, assembly machines. Right. Sitting, sitting in this box is just a stack of copper. In a factory, it becomes something that directly benefits you. So when I say there's no benefit to buffering, that's what I mean. It's not increasing your science. It's not increasing your production or your mining. It's just sitting here. Right. And on top of that, there's also the... Uh... The fact that a lot of people may not consider, and that even myself I didn't consider until mentioned, um, until Zuri mentioned it, is um, what these buffers do, right, is, is it keeps your stuff running, you know, because obviously they're filling up until they get full. But while they're filling up, um, again, like Zuri said, the copper's not doing anything, but while they're filling up, um, all your furnaces and all your miners are running and causing pollution, which is angering the biters, increasing your evolution rate. Um, even though you're not actually 
directly gaining anything from it, right? Because, I mean, all your miners are still having to run while doing this. Um, just to put the copper in the box, which is doing nothing. So, uh, the, the buffers are essentially just creating more pollution and more potential danger for you. Um, because it's having to run, right? If you don't have these buffers and you're not using all your resources, the belts will fill up, the furnaces will hold a little bit, and then everything will actually just shut down and you're not even producing the pollution from your smelters or your miners until you actually need it. Yes, that's a very good point. You're making the game more difficult for yourself by having this, by increasing the biter evolution and attack rate from the extra pollution that this causes. Exactly. And um, I guess kind of just to, uh, you, you know, look at look at other people's point of view, a lot of people will argue um, that, that they use the buffers to, like, smooth out their production, right? That they use the buffers so that um, when their production gets kind of low, that the buffer can, like, help supplement that until they, you know, get re rebuild some miners or whatever to, to get it back up to speed, is I think what a lot of people um, use as an argument. Um, and I mean, I mean, that's valid to a stage, but, but again, I mean, Zuri, I mean, you, you nailed it right on the head pretty much, is that, you know, you could have taken that time and resources and effort and just expanded your mining to begin with, or made it ro more robust to begin with, and again, I mean, each furnace stores an entire stack, right? So you have at least that little bit um, that is inherently here. Yeah. So each furnace stores a stack, and your train system should be... I don't think buffer's the right word. It should You should be able to unload an entire train worth, so that is an inherent buffer system as well. We'll, we'll cover trains eventually, I hope. Oh yeah, for sure we will. But you're much better off expanding your, your mining. And I think I have... That's a good segue for the, the mining setup that I mid-maxed here recently. Yeah, Zuri has a really nice min-max mining setup um, that is extremely compact, um, can fit, or can or dense, rather, and uh, kind of inherently balanced, so I'll let you go over this. It's also very cheap. I wanted to, this little bit of underground belt is just for visual representation. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's the max length, small poles, and just pack as tightly as possible the miners. Right. And again, uh, miners don't produce any pollution or have any energy draw when they're not operating. So there's no, outside of the initial cost of building it, there's no down, downfall for, for doing this. Mm -hmm. And you can offset the cost by picking these miners up and putting them somewhere else. So it's, it's more of an investment than a real cost. Right. And... Uh... And yeah, so you said this is inherently balanced. You want to go over really quick why that is? Sure. I, I see people complain about this a lot too. Like they need lo uh, lane balancers because their miners will feed to one side or the other. Mm -hmm. But let's say this the one you're standing by is backed up because that lane's backed up. So what happens is this miner on the other side and the miner behind it will start feeding the other lane. Right. Because it's mining so you, from a tile under it. Yeah. So it tessellates every seven tiles, and five of those tiles can hit either lane. So only only these two, this gap here, only hits one lane, and these two hit the other lane. But other than that, it, it'll inherently balance itself. And the miner that needs more iron will grab its overlap from neighboring uh, miners and send it that way. And inherent balance is something I'm very fond of. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great way to do things. And uh, and yeah, so this can be, you know, one, one advantage to doing it this way rather than having a... Uh, I know a lot of people, myself included, would normally build miners so that the power poles are, like, behind them. So, like, this... Um, and granted, the miners still have this advantage when they're next to each other, but not anything behind it because there's space like this. Well, it's, it's a one gap instead of two overlap. Right, exactly. 
Well, that's that's getting way into the min-maxing. Normally, you don't even need to worry about this at all. But if you do worry about it, this is the best way to do it. Yeah. But there are always exceptions to rules, and buffers aren't always a bad thing. It's just generally you want to avoid them. Yeah, there's a, there's a few situations where they're good. And, and one of the examples is fuel. Burnables. It's okay to buffer burnables. It's absolutely fine. It may even be preferable. Right, because this can um, prevent that like negative feedback loop you have sometimes where you run out of fuel. Um, and of course, I mean, this is if you're using steam, if you're using Correction. solar. Positive but... feedback. Yeah. Sorry, positive feedback. So, um, so yeah, where you run out of fuel and then you're things don't have enough fuel to fuel your boilers and then obviously your power dies even more and then you can't get your miners don't work and you can't get fuel so on and so forth um with buffering this that doesn't happen or at least it gives you a lot more of a um a lot more of, of a chance to to kind of fix the issue before it really becomes a problem yeah hopefully you notice that the coal lines emptied because you're using coal lines for smelting and everything else mm-hmm and if your coal lines, if you notice your coal lines are empty, you can should be enough time to fix it, and you won't lose power with something like this. It's right. one of the one of the times when um, the cost of setting up the buffer and running the miners for extra is worth it because losing power is a pain. Yeah, it's uh, it can be it can be a huge problem, and uh, also another reason why this one is good is the way Zuri set this up is essentially only half of it is even fed through the buffer to begin with um, because half of it is just sent directly through the middle here um, which doesn't even like pass through the buffer and then the other half so a quarter on each side is sent through the buffer and once the buffer backs up it just flows along in side loads here so it has the option to skip back uh, past the buffer if it backs up yeah i'm not fond of interstitial buffers where you force things through a buffer. I, I don't like that at all. Right. And uh, you had mentioned to me there's like a few other cases, so like um, oil barrels or something that are usually okay or even good to buffer. Yeah, oil barrels are good uh, to buffer. You have to be super careful with that, otherwise it'll flood your entire logistics network. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're doing really well-calculated min-maxing for like a speed run or something, then you might want to consider buffering things that you normally would never buffer, like science packs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But again, it's something that you really have to sit down and calculate beforehand and say, okay, I need to save like seven stacks of red science packs for 45 minutes kind of thing, and then stop feeding it and empty it out. Right, yeah, exactly. It has to be really, really tuned um, for that to be good. And... Um, one, one other thing I want to go over here really quick with buffers that that I think can be an issue more for newer players uh, rather than experienced players is that um, the buffers can kind of create a false sense of security. And I think you've mentioned this before, Zuri, is that, uh, right, that the buffers will, will give you some resources, some spare resources in the chest. And if you're newer to the game, you know, and you're trying to, you know, figure out science and figure out how everything works and stuff, you may not be paying enough attention to notice, right, that your input belts are kind of dwindling in resources and stuff. And since you have your buffers full of stuff, um, you're, you're taking resources from the buffers and your output belts of, like, finished goods is still looking fine because it's feeding from the buffers you've built up. And you're like, all right, we're doing good. And again, for newer players, um, you may not notice your input belt is, like, empty or getting close to it. And then it becomes to a point where it's just too late, right? Because your buffer empties out and then everything just stops. Because your buffers are gone, you have no input, which you didn't notice because your buffers were supplying a full output, and then you are kind of stuck. I mean, obviously you can just build more, but it's just better to be, like, ahead of the curve. Um, oh no, you can get stuck in that situation. I've seen it happen, actually, on the on a stream. You'll build the, uh, they'll have the buffer, and they'll be going fine, and then all of a sudden, they have this big, massive biter attack that wipes out all their mining. And at oh. that exact moment, 
their buffer dries out and there's no iron left to build miners. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> That's full uh... panic mode. You just expanded your uh, attacks and your evolution to the point where you can't win. Yeah. So you because just... you used a buffer and, and it, it, it didn't expand the income fast enough. That's a really good point. Yeah, so it can actually just get you stuck and make you lose even potentially. And, and yeah, I do want to just emphasize one more time that this, the, the point I just went over and Azuri went over, I think, is a little bit more for newer players. Because, you know, more experienced players, you know, once you just kind of just autopilot, you know, through the stuff, you're not trying to figure everything out. Um, you know, typically you'll notice when your input belt is getting low, you'll be like, okay, well, things are kind of dwindling. We should go build more miners and you'll take care of the issue before it starts. Now, obviously, that doesn't exempt you from the other problems. Initially, we mentioned with buffers, but uh, but this one we just talked about, I think, is more for inexperienced players who may not notice that type of stuff. And even for experienced players, they're a pain to move. You never want to make something, like, permanent. And buffers are pretty annoying to move. And they explode. <laughs> yeah, they explode, and uh, they are annoying to move, even... Like, even if you have robots, they're annoying, especially if you've built them pretty big. Um, it still takes a while for the robots to empty them, I mean, and you can't do anything, really, with the space until they're empty. So, I mean, there's just there's, uh, so many reasons. I mean, we've probably already gone over five or six different reasons, um, in most cases, to just avoid them. Um, except for the few particular situations we mentioned earlier. Yeah, there's always exceptions to the rules. Right. And, uh, I mean, really, I think that covers it. We, we, I mean, we've gone through most things, and, I mean, do you have anything else to mention or go over, Zuri? No. Uh, sorry for rambling for so long on, on this, but it's something that needed to be covered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this video is a little long, a little longer than the most, most ones we've done, but again, this was requested by quite a few people, and it is something, I think, that needed quite a lot of explanation to actually, you know, explain the thinking um, behind why they're not a good idea. But, uh, but yeah, that'll do it for now. So I will, uh, we'll end the video here as you look at our newly decorated base. And, and yeah, Hopefully I think that'll do it. File. <laughs> yeah, luckily we, we did have a backup. Um, but, uh, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any, uh, questions, comments, concerns, uh, you know, feedback of any kind or new submissions, do let us know down in the comment section and, until next time, we will catch you all later. Later.